Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to see yet another tool we can use to do dependency management. And if you are serious about C++, I would recommend you at least try one of these two tools that I am going to talk about in this video and the next one. In this one, we will talk about VC Package, which is a third party dependency management tool for C++ project. This is a tool that was built by Microsoft. So if you hate big corporations, you may go slow on this. But there is another one which is developed by the community and uh, you may like it. But VC Package is also good. And I am going to show you how to get started with it in this video. The first thing we want to do is to look at the documentation. So you can come to your favorite search engine and search for VC package. You will see a link like this. So let's go there. And the VC package is a free C++ package manager. It gives you a way to easily get dependencies and integrate them in your C++ project. I have to say that it doesn't only work with CMake but it provides good integration with the CMake projects. And that's how we are going to use this in this video here. Just to get a feel of what you can do with it, let's go to the packages section here and see what we can find. Let's say we search for FMT, one of the libraries that we have used. You see they support it. Let's search for SFML, what we used in the last video. You see they support it. Let's search for Google test. Okay, they support it. Let's search for catch two. They support it. You can even use big frameworks like Qt. So if you search for Qt, you see they support Qt6. You can search for boost. Okay, they support it. You can search for OpenCV. These are really good big dependencies that you can uh, bring in you, your C++ projects. This is really cool. So once you have a VC package integrated in your project, it's going to be a piece of cake to bring any of these libraries into your project. I think they even support FFmpeg, a good powerful library you can use to do video processing in your C++ projects. Maybe I'm going to cover this in a future video series. It is something I use a lot in my projects, but it's a really good library for doing video processing in your C++ applications. Now, let's come back to VC Package. If you go to Getting Started, they tell you how to install it. To install it, you're going to git clone, a git repository. So you git clone and you run this script here and it is going to install VC Package. In my case, I installed this on my C drive. So if you go to C, and do VC package, you see it is right here. So I cloned this repository and then I run this bash script that is here. It is a batch script on Windows. On Linux, it's going to be a bash script. So this is the batch file that I run. If you run it, it is going to install it. I think I can even double click on it. It is not going to do anything bad because I already have it installed. So it is going to do whatever it does and it is going to install VC package on your system. Once you have it installed, you can use it, okay? And that's what we are going to do. There are a few steps you need to follow to use VC package. The first one is what we just did. So you clone the repository and run the script file that I just showed you from the documentation. The second thing you need to do is to tell CMake to use VC package. How do you do that? Well, you set up your tool chain variable. This is what we are doing here. We are setting up a variable named CMake toolchain file, and we are pointing that into the location where we installed VC package. So VC package root is an environment variable that I have set on my system here. Let's actually show you that. So if we do env on my system here, I am on Windows, so you will have to adapt this to whatever system you are using. So let's go to environment variables and go to system variables. I think we have one called vcpkg underscore root. And if we go here, we have it here. And you see that it is pointing to C VC package, which is the location where we installed our VC package files. So this VC package root variable is going to resolve to C VC package. So what we are doing in our CMake script here is basically going in that folder where we installed the VC package. We are going into 
let's actually follow this. We are going into the scripts folder, which is going to be right here. We are going into build systems, which is right here. And we are looking for a file named vcpackage.cmake. And this is what is going to tell your project how to integrate vcpackage with cmake. So this is something you need to do. If you want, you can open this file and see what is inside. You can do that. It is a CMake file, so it is going to do whatever it does. If you want, you can read this, but we are users, so we are not going to look into that here. So this is what you need to do. Once you do this, CMake is going to know to use VC package to do dependency management. But this is just one way. Another way I see people do it, which is really not recommended officially, is to include this VC package file. And again, you include it by going through the root, going into scripts, going into build systems and finding this file and including it in your CMake project. But make sure to not do these two things. You have to either do what we have on top here or do what we have on the bottom here. And I do recommend doing this because this is much readable. It is what is supported by the documentation. Once you tell your CMake project to use VC package, then you have to tell it the dependencies that you need. And you put those dependencies in a file named vcpackage.json. And we have an example here. It is going to be located in the root of our project. You can see it right here. And inside that file, you will have a JSON object in which you will be specifying a few properties and their values. For example, we can specify the name of the project. We can specify a version string, but the most important property is the dependencies property, which is going to be a JSON array containing the dependencies that you need. So we need catch two, we need FMT, we need SFML, this is how you specify it. But this is an oversimplification of how you do these things. I am later on going to show you a more practical example, but this is going to give you the dependencies and we will be able to use them. Right now, we don't want to complicate things. We just want you to get started. Once you have the fundamentals, you can move on and even read the documentation on your own to really see how to use these things. Okay, now we have set up VC package for our project and VC package knows which dependencies we need in our project. And when we try to configure the project, VC package is going to download them and store them on our local drive. To use them in our project, we have to find the packages. I know this sounds like a lot of steps, but you are really going to get familiar with this. It's not that complicated. So we have to find the packages. We say we want to find a package called catch2. We want to find FMT. We want to find SFML. And if we want, we can make them required. If they are not required, we can leave out this keyword here. That's not going to matter, but we need them in our project here. So we have to find them. If you want to know what find package does, please come to the documentation. Let's say CMake find package. We can do that. And you can see that the command has a few modes by which it searches for packages. This command is going to find a package and load its package specific details. So it is going to find a package and it is also going to make the targets that that package makes available available for use in our project here. So this is really powerful. Once we find the packages, they are going to be available for use in our project here. And we can link against targets that these packages define. For example, we can link against SFML, we can link against FMT, we can link against catch2, and this is going to work right away. Please note that we don't have to mess with the CMake module path variable. Because VC package is not going to give us the problem we saw with CPM in the last video. So we don't need this here. I wanted this to be super clear. So let's see a live project to put all these things into practice. We can open a new episode, episode 28. This is going to be talking about VC package. And before we do anything, make sure that you have VC package installed. Mine is installed in my C drive as I have shown you. Let's do that again so that it is really clear. So C, VC package, this is the location. The second thing you want to do is to set up the environment variable, which is going to point to the location where a VC package is installed. And it should point 
in C VC package in my case here. In your case, you should point wherever you have a VC package installed. It should point to the root directory of VC package. If you are on Linux, let me show you how you can do this because I think some are going to be on Linux like systems. So let's open my Ubuntu here. Okay, and if we go in home and do ls, you notice I have a VC package folder as well. You can see it right here. And in my bash configuration, let's do lsalh to see my bash configuration. It's called bash rc. So let's um, nvim dot bash rc. This, this is just a way to open this up for everybody to see. If you go all the way to the bottom, so let's go there. Okay, you see that I have exported VC package root to point to the location where I have a VC package installed. And this is how you set up environment variables on Linux. I am using bash. It may be different if you are using another shell on Linux. Let's hit colon Q and this mark here to exit out of them. And we can even close this. We don't need this anymore. You saw how you can set up your environment variable on Linux. Now we have a VC package installed. We have our environment variable set. Now we can set our CMake toolchain file to point to the location where we have VC package installed and load this CMake file here. This is what you need to do. By the time you do this, the next thing you want to do is to set up a VC package JSON file in which you specify the dependencies that you need. In this case, we need catch2, FMT, and SFML. And now VC package knows to download these dependencies once we configure our project. The other thing we need is to find the packages as we saw in the slides. So make sure to go to the location where you manage your dependencies and find the packages that you need. Notice we are finding catch2, FMT, and SFML. Once we find them, we will make sure to link against these libraries in our project, and we have to link against proper targets. For example, this GUI executable is linking against SFML graphics. This use FMT executable is linking against FMT. And if we go into our test folder, we will see that our test code is linking against, let's make sure we go there. If we go in our test folder, we will see that our unit tests are linking against this target within the catch2 library. Once we have this, if we configure the project, the dependencies are going to be automatically downloaded and our application is going to work. Let's make sure we don't have any uh, garbage in the build directory. So we're going to clean it up and uh, we configure CMake and uh, the source directory is going to be this one. The build directory is going to be build. So we configure and a VC package is going to use things we call triplets that I don't want to go into right now, but you can read about that in the documentation. We are just going to use the default configuration on whatever operating system we are on. In this case, it is going to build for the x64 architecture on Windows. It is going to be using the MSVC compiler. And one thing I like about these proper third party dependency management tools like VC package and Conan is that they give you instructions on which targets to link against. For example, it's going to notice that we are using FMT and it is going to tell us to use this, make sure you find package, okay? And make sure you link against this target here. This is really cool. If you want to use this as a header only version, please do this and link against FMT header only. This is really cool. Notice we have the same piece of information for SFML. So for SFML, you can link against SFML system, SFML network, SFML graphics, SFML window, and you will know what you need depending on what features you are using in this SFML library. I think we also have catch2, so it should tell us how to use catch2 here. Notice find package catch2, and this is how you use it. You can either use catch2, catch2 here, or catch2 with main. Cache 2 with main is going to also provide a main function and we don't have to write a main function for testing ourselves. Again, you can read the documentation for Cache 2 if you need more details on this. Our project has been configured. The build files have been written to our build folder. So we can see make build build. So let's do that. 
this is going to build the project. It's going to link against our third party dependencies and we will have our binaries that we can use. Notice how fast it is. So let's try to do that. We're going to CD build and we're going to go and we're going to go into debug. We can say debug and GUI to run our SFML application. Notice it is going to run in blue because the code says so. If you go in GUI and look at the color we are using, it is blue here. And this is the text we see in the header. This is the size of the window. You can play with these things, but we can also run rooster. So let's do debug rooster. It is going to run. If we want, we can use FMT. So debug use FMT. If we run it, it is going to say hello world which is what we are saying in this entry point file here. Now you know how to use VC package to pull dependencies for use in your C++ project. Again, the steps are, let's repeat them so that it is very clear. You have to install VC package. Once you install it, you have to set up this environment variable and how you set it up is going to depend on the operating system you are on. So mine is named VC package root and I set it up on Windows. And you have to set up the CMake toolchain file. Once you do that, you will need to set up a VC package JSON file. So we have it here. And this is the content. If later on you need to add another library, you can just put a comma here and add the other library below, just like this, just like we did for these other libraries. Once you have the VC package JSON file, once you configure the project, the dependencies will be downloaded and made available to your project. So you need to find them and then link against them like we have been doing all along. This is really cool. Let me show you that you can also include the VC package file. We will do that in the CMake list.txt file. So we can comment this out. We don't have to do these two things at the same time. You can just include the file here and this is also going to work. Let's reconfigure. So let's do that. We can say cd up up and rerun our configuration command. It should be in our history here. It is here, configure. It's going to install. Notice that VC package is going to automatically install things that you need. It's going to run a VC package install for you. But if you want, you can even run a VC package install in this directory and it is going to install the dependencies. But it is good to let CMake handle this because the VC package is this good. Once we have configured, we can build. So let's run the build command, which is going to be this guy here. CMake build build. It won't take much because we have built this before. And if we want, we can run our GUI. So we're going to CD into build before we do run build. And it is going to run our application. Again, if you want to change it, you can go inside here. For example, change this to blue, all yellow. This is going to do. To make this take effect, you have to say CMake. You have to build again and we need to build from the current directory. And once this happens, we can do debug GUI and it should be a yellow window. And it is going to say the title here that we expect. This is really cool. And we are using VC package for dependency management. If you want to learn more about VC package, please go to the documentation. They have a lot of good information for you to try here. For example, you can install and use VC package with CMake. You can install dependencies for your project. They will tell you a lot of information that you will find useful, but this should be a good start. If you found this video useful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. That's going to help YouTube pick up this video and show it to as many people as possible, and that's really good. I am going to stop here in this video, and I will see you next time.